Hello, and good afternoon to all. Uh, and many thanks for the invitation, the kind introduction from Irina. Uh, following the previous uh, excellent presentations and the other conversation with David Goldberg, the day's already long, eventually less so in the US coast. Uh, and so I will try to be brief, so let me start. Uh, as Irina mentioned, I'm currently interested in the processes of digitalization at work. This follows from work being developed through Collabor, uh, the collaborative laboratory, which the Center for Social Studies promoted together with two other research centers and uh, partners from the business sector and the uh, social economy that focuses on the analysis of work, employment, and social protection. Digitalization is a process of implementation of a variety of digital technologies throughout society, which, as David Goldberg told us yesterday, has had great impact on work processes. It is relevant to recall here Charlie Chaplin's Modern Times, a movie that came to epitomize the transformation of work through mass production in the first half of last century, and which I will refer to throughout this talk. As we now listen to and read so often, and as David so eloquently described to us yesterday, we are undergoing a period of seemingly significant transformations in work processes through the onset of several automation processes, through robotization, implementation of robots in industry, a process which has been ongoing for a few decades and which we can connect to also in the images uh, that we see in the factory in modern times. And more recently, through the development and dissemination of artificial intelligence technologies, which have now increasing use throughout the economy, including in the service sectors. In referring to digitalization at work, I am referring to two different ideas. On one hand, we can focus on digitalization itself, how it works and how it is transforming society and the economy. We come across frequently with this narrative. It is the narrative of technological development, of economic progress through technology and innovation, of terms like Industry 4.0, a new European report actually just recently came out discussing now Industry 5.0, and with mentions of digital transformation, and of course, of the canonical transformation of work. This narrative has a certain aura of technological determinism, a wave of progress which we cannot change and must drive. But it also comes with costs. And the costs when we turn to digitalization network and the so-called transformation of work are jobs. David Goldberg shows, showed us yesterday how several projections estimate a very significant amount of job loss throughout the economy. A study that became often quoted by Fred Osborne from the University of Oxford predicted 47% of the jobs will be lost in the near future due to automation processes. The authors argue that AI introduces a significant change in this distribution of job loss across occupations. This time, it is not just the less qualified jobs that are at risk, but also those more qualified. Some legal work can be automated, some medical work can be automated, and certainly some academic work can be automated. So it is not surprising that this narrative brings with it a sense of uncertainty, risk, and potential anxiety. However, further research has shown that there are significant methodological limitations with those estimates. The task-based approach to labor economics has shown that jobs need to be considered with regard to their task composition, as there is not a unique identification between one job and one single task. As such, while certain tasks may be automated, that does not mean that the whole occupation is at stake. Again, differentiations here are important. In Chaplin's modern times, both the capitalist in the office and the tramp, Charlot, tightening the bolts and the screws in the factory, may be happy to see that repetitive task replaced by robots, albeit for different reasons. But there is a significant difference between the substitution of this task, which is a whole occupation, and the substitution of medical diagnosis by AI providing the doctor with further information for his diagnostic work, but which may still, uh, who, he may still uh, maintain his job. So talking about screws and bolts, we know who gets screwed in the end. This and other criticisms of Fred Osborne's job loss study have led others and the OECD to produce much more conservative estimates of changes in labor demand to, due to automation, estimating that only some 9% of jobs to be automatable in the near future. Despite these big differences, how come do we largely get the story of the radical transformation of work? This narrative builds on the uncertainty ahead and the fear of job loss. In doing so, and in addition to, the, to strengthening the power divisions in the workplace, it displaces our focus from a second reading of digitalization at work, one which is less visible in the main narrative and in the big numbers, but which is more pervasive, focusing not just on digitalization itself, but rather on work, work processes, and how these are affected by digitalization in the workplace. 
There's a point in the movie Modern Times when we watch the firm president controlling the worker, Shiloh, the tramp in the restroom through, through a, a camera and a big screen to his surprise at such intrusion. However, despite the differences, we can quickly connect to descriptions of workers nowadays increasingly controlled in their rest times, toilet times, throughout their working time. Recent descriptions of working conditions at Amazon are imperfect examples of that. These and other ways of controlling the workplace are strongly enabled by digital technologies and by the multiple tracking processes and traces we leave behind. But the control of the worker in the restroom may connect with you in highly qualified jobs outside of the factory floors in different ways, as it, it also blurs the division between the workplace and private spaces. While we do not expect such invasion of private spaces, even at Amazon, although the reports are quite disturbing in descriptions of the reverse, as workers and the strict time controls do not have the time to use the toilet and find ways to fulfill their physiological needs in their workspace. And so we find we connect uh, to the current telework period dominated by Zoom and other ICTs, where the boundaries between our personal and work lives <clears throat> are less well defined. We may see this as a beneficial seamless exchange between spaces over which we have significant control, providing us with autonomy to balance our personal needs and our work commitments between our digital and material worlds but we always encounter unexpected barriers that remind us of our lack of control. This video conferencing app that we're using here allows us to adapt several features, blurring the background, including a picture or even a video on the background, IPR alone. It all appears rather seamlessly, but seamless appears to be the way that we tend to portray the exchange between our work and personal lives on the digital world. You are expected to move back and forth seamlessly between both worlds to your benefit. But things may not go as seamless or not as much to your benefit. Sometimes the hardware doesn't conform or it is the software or it is some obscure regulation to make our moves between the material and digital world not such a seamless process. The seamless merger between the digital and the material between the private and workspace are only seamless until the next limit. The limits on our privacy have suddenly moved to a new normal we did not fully accept a couple of years ago, also representing that tension of the blurring of boundaries that the digital brings and its impacts on the quality of work. Information communication technologies are mediating the work experience and expanding the workplace beyond the office walls. At the same time, the increasing importance of digital platforms is reconfiguring through embedded algorithms, not just the distribution of services, but also work and employment conditions. This new workspace that enters the private automobile or the domestic space points to the importance of technology in organizing distribution of work, but also in monitoring performance or imposing control of the, over the workers, as we've seen before. The pervasiveness of the digital makes us, enable, makes us enable tracking of our own lives in multiple ways, sometimes unknowingly through our regular activities, whereby we leave digital traces, but often knowingly, opting when we opt to self-track, we track what we eat, with the paths to walk or run, etc. And similarly, we throw down the barriers dividing our private space and our workspace willingly, if not even if not always consciously, in an often imperceptible declining slope to a new minimum. A second form of digital control in the, work, in the workplace qualifies more directly as surveillance, noting the increasing monitoring of the workplace. At Shoshana Zuboff in her groundbreaking breaking book, The Ages of Surveillance Capitalism, has described uh, in one case, uh, on how a new technology enabled any organization to create metrics reflecting the movements, interactions, tone of voice, or the social networks of employees, with the goal to improve a firm's performance. As the work of Karen Levy also shows in relation to the experience of truck drivers, Despite the aggregate nature of much of the information collected, the, the new digital forms of monitoring have changed the way firms control these workers in ways that were previously not possible. In fact, despite attempts in recent years to protect CV, citizens from the power of data with GDPR, for example, 
it is unquestionable that digitalization favors multiple forms of control and is central to the processes of technological innovation and of new forms of commodification of labor. But can we discuss these impacts of digital technologies in the workspace when these are so pervasive and embed, and, and embed the new forms of capitalism? One of the first points that I am making here is that, firstly, we need to address the impacts of digitalization in the workplace. And we need to recognize the digital, that digital technologies, not just as working against workers, but also to identify to which extent this may be used to support the defense or resistance of workers. The distribution of platform workers' tasks and the corresponding expected times for completion reflect the conditions imposed on workers, as often the time allocated to the succession, succession of tasks is less than the sum of the time of the task individually. Can digital technologies also contribute to protect the worker making explicit, explicit these practices? For example, using digital technologies to track working times. Uh, Amazon and Uber, for example, impose privacy conditions on the algorithmic control they, that they impose precisely to protect from revealing the indecent work practices and, and, form, and from the public impact these disclosures um, often have. One specific initiative, We Clock from a Workers Collective, has set out to ask how we can use new emer emerging technology to strengthen the voice of workers. We Clock aims to do just that. It offers a privacy preserving way to empower uh, workers and unions in their battle for decent work, as they say. So here we have a, an example of working uh, with digital technologies for the workers. Secondly, there is also a space of action for the governance of technologies. So this is the second point. Uh, technologies are not predetermined and they are subject to negotiation, to shaping, to alternative configurations. Science and Technology Studies, STS, has developed different methods of public engagement and of assessment of the impacts of technology. Technology assessment, largely developed with participatory technologies, uh, processes, I mean, constitutes a broad-based capacity extended through society that can act on a variety of inputs to manage emerging knowledge-based technologies while such management is still possible. Such processes of TA, technology assessment, can have different impacts. They can be used specifically to address a concrete controversy, but can also have anticipatory nature, contributing to different governance instruments. While TA processes have mostly not been used to address the impact of emerging technologies on work and on the workplace, if we recognize the very strong impact that these technologies are having on workers and the workplace, we ought to open up the space of intervention for TA and to give voice to workers and those most impacted by digital technologies. The movie Modern Times ends with a new dawn, with the tramp and the gamin reunited and walking into a hopeful new future. Can we have also a new dawn in this relation between digital technologies and work? One that recognizes the dynamics of power and resistance that reflect the co-production of technology in society that STS has aptly described in multiple case studies, and that builds upon processes of technology governance that focus not just on the technology, but on workers and their work experience. Yes, technology is politics by other means. But technology is not a predetermined artifact or body of knowledge onto which we must jump. Technology and society are co-produced along the way, and it comes to partly reflect our own collective values that enhance it or allow it to develop as such. We need to value the collective experience and social intervention and adopt what Sheila Jasanov has called as technologies of humility, to engage actors in reflecting about different technological futures and to implement our shared meaning of what is decent work. The challenges presented by new technologies amount not just to scientific, technical, and economic issues requiring ingenious solutions and approaches, but are also a crossroads where different visions of technological development are conjoined. This challenge is then about how we ought to live and relate to technology, namely how the workplace is bound to be an arena where uncertainties and hopes about the future are brought together. The, que the question we need to pose is then, how can workers and digital technology get along without succumbing to surveillance capitalism 
or in David Goldberg's proposal to tracking capitalism. So while modern times ends with the same last two words as David Goldberg ended his talk yesterday, an image with the end, I do not see as the only option that of exiting as David proposed, but believe that there is a space to keep constructing this avenue, which despite strong forces along the, against along the way, must respect the workers, their rights, and their satisfaction at work, recognizing decent work as a key element of contemporary societies. Charlie Chaplin has an alternative end to modern times, a sadly sentimental ending, whereby the tramp and the gambling parted forever. The chosen more romantic end is not necessarily less sad, but it is more promising, leaving, leaving the future open. I propose that technology assessment in the, work, in the workplace can be also an important tool in constructing these roads whereby workers and technology move along, maintaining several futures open. Thank you. <laughs>